Hi, Naomi Stockman from My Local Hypnosis. Just going to talk about some strategies for dealing with anxiety. I know that anxiety feeds on worry and worry increases with uncertainty. So at the moment, there's such a high level of uncertainty for everybody. We don't know what's going on around us. The world's a different place. And so those of us that are prone to uncertainty or prone to worrying, worrying or susceptible to feeling anxious, there may be some setbacks at the moment. You might have been doing okay before and now you might be feeling just that increased level of anxiety coming upon you. And the definition of worry is basically thinking of the possible negative things that could happen in the future. So all the possible things and there might be some things that worry you more than others and those things are most likely never going to happen and so all that brain space that emotional space that physical space that's taken up with worrying is actually taking up your ability to be enjoying now so your imagining is destroying the present moment and you may not know that the unconscious actually can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's imagined. So that's how people can change their memories of what happened in the past. And you might talk to five people and they might remember something different because the imagination isn't, the memory actually is not an accurate source of information. And they've actually proven that by testing people. So unconsciously, when you imagine horrible things or things that are upsetting or distressing and you know what your demons are. We all have our different demons, things that we worry about and you're actually experiencing those things on an unconscious level and you can't just say no. You can't just say to yourself, don't think about that because if I say to you, don't think of a pink kangaroo, well, you just thought of a pink kangaroo, didn't you? So, Basically, how the mind works is that you can't tell your mind what not to think. You can't tell your body what not to feel. So you can't say, don't be sad, don't be angry, don't worry, don't think about that. It doesn't work. So what we can do instead and the things that we can do that do work is fill our imagination with something else. So our mind can only do one thing at, the, at a time. So for example, um, if you're feeling afraid, you can start to think of all the things you're thankful for because it takes up um, different parts of the brain and they can't work together at the same time. So if you're imagining something richly, deeply wonderful and remembering that those are as real to your unconscious as your everyday experiences. So they actually did a study and it wasn't recent because it was a, a long time ago. They did a study on people who survived the Second World War to see um, what commonalities there were. So those people where, you know, everyone around them was dying of, you know, sickness and starvation and and being, you know, maybe in different um, prisoner of war camps, etc. disease, everything that, that did affect them at that time. And they all the people that they spoke to, they had a commonality, which was that they richly believed and imagined for, for life and the future and had hope. So hope and a purpose for after the war. So keeping your mind, feeding it with that hope, feeding it with that purpose is really important because it's really tempting to let the worry brain run the, the imagination show. But you do have a choice. So sit Sit back right now and just imagine the opposite. Richly imagine with all the colours, the sounds, the smells, the feelings. Richly imagine whatever it is you want, like a fantasy if you like. And that goes for anything. You can richly imagine yourself running along a beach, the wind in your hair, the wet sand under your feet, laughing and playing with the people you love. And if you've got a dog, perhaps the dog's there too. You can hear the waves. That's right. And you're all healthy. You're all happy. You're all completely calm. And how good does that feel? Or you can imagine yourself at the gym if that's a, a goal that you've got. See yourself. And perhaps you've never even um, you know, been to the gym. You might even feel 
self-conscious going to the gym, but there's nothing stopping you from imagining. So you can see yourself doing the exercises. Imagine yourself on the equipment. You look fantastic. You know what you're doing. You're fit. You're lean. Yes, you feel great. And just imagine how that feels to be there doing those things in your new body, your fit body, your strong body. Or see yourself at your most desired job, how it feels, the way people speak to you, what's happening around you and all the money that you might be getting paid in that job. So you need to keep your mind busy with imagining things that you want, not things you don't want, and just to see your real life, your unconscious needs instructions on what experiences to know to bring into your life because you might believe that you're in control of what happens in your life but um, the truth is your unconscious mind is running the show and if you are feeling anxious or worried that means that your unconscious mind has one thing that it needs to do and that is to keep you safe and it's going to keep you safe by bringing you more and more of those feelings until you show it. Hey, we are safe. Look at all these fantastic things. Imagine them. Bring them into reality, into your body, into your unconscious mind. So if you're up worrying at night and you might be laying there unable to sleep and that's okay, you can't stop doing that. You already know because you've tried. But you can do something else. And your mind can only do one thing at a time. So if you are busy imagining wonderful things, that's the way forward. The small steps lead to big change. Like, share, comment, subscribe, show me some love. Naomi Stockman, My Local Hypnosis. Chat soon.